Coming up on Jerusalem Dateline, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pushes back against the international outcry over one of his ministers walk around the Temple Mount. Plus, saber rattling from China as it beefs up its military. And a rabbi reports on religious persecution around the world. And an archaeologist discovers a sacrificial altar dating from 4,000 years ago, the time of Genesis. All this and more on this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. Last week, the United Nations Security Council met in an emergency session following the visit of a prominent minister and Benjamin Netanyahu's new government to the Temple Mount. Critics of the UN say the emergency meeting was another attempt to put the blame on Israel for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Incoming National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gavir sparked a meeting when he spent 13 minutes on the Temple Mount, the first visit by an Israeli minister in almost five years. During the emergency session in New York, the UN and a parade of nations, including the U.S., criticized Israel for the visit. Secretary Blinken has said very clearly that it's absolutely critical for all sides to exercise restraint, refrain from provocative actions and rhetoric at the Haram al-Sharif Temple Mount and other holy sites in Jerusalem, both in word and in practice. In this spirit, we oppose any and all unilateral actions that depart from the historic status quo, which are unacceptable. Israel's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdan, slammed the meeting and said he was shocked. And why? Because there is absolutely no reason that this emergency session today should be held. None. To hold a Security Council session on a non-event is truly absurd. To claim that this brief and completely legitimate visit should spark an emergency Security Council session is pathetic. Security Council session on what? Former Israeli ambassador to the UN, Danny Danon, served five years at the UN and told CBN News the Palestinian Authority was behind the emergency meeting. It's part of the diplomatic terrorism of the Palestinian Authority. You know, they put pressure on the representatives in the Security Council to call for a meeting. They will come spread lies. No, it's not helping the Palestinians. It's not helping the peace process. It's part of the blame game. For his part, Itamar Ben-Gavir maintained his visit, did not violate the status quo on the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount is open to all. Muslims and Christians come up here, and yes, also Jews. In a government I'm a member of, there will be no discrimination, and Jews will come up and visit the Temple Mount. After Ben-Gavir's visit to the Temple Mount, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu issued a statement saying that the status quo would not change. That's where Israeli police prevent anyone other than Muslims from praying on the Temple Mount for fear of disturbances. Well, the Al-Aqsa Mosque on Jerusalem's Temple Mount is one of Islam's holiest sites. And as shown from the international outcry over Ben-Gavir's visit, even the perception of Israeli threatening the mosque escalates tensions in the Muslim community. We explored this perceived threat in a story we did a few years ago. Critics say it's a dishonest tactic aimed at undermining not only Israel, but Judeo-Christian values as well. It's one of the most holy and contested pieces of real estate on earth, the Temple Mount. For decades, Islamic leaders have incited Muslims to violence by telling them that the Al-Aqsa Mosque is in danger. First, they claim that the Israelis were undermining its foundations to make it collapse. Now they also say it's a threat even for Jews to pray on the sacred plateau. Extreme uh, uh, movements believe that Israel is planning to build the third temple and to uh, destroy their holy shrine. Known in Arabic as the Haram al-Sharif, or noble sanctuary, it's the place where two consecutive Jewish temples once stood. The second was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. Now Muslim mosques occupy the site. The Golden Dome of the Rock to my right is the most identifiable Muslim shrine on the Temple Mount. But it's the gray-domed Al-Aqsa Mosque to my left that Muslims consider the third holiest site in Islam. Al-Aqsa was first built in 705 AD. In Muslim theology, the site precedes the Jews and goes back to creation. You know, Adam, when he descended from the heaven, he came here and he was 
pray here. No, no difference between uh, Suleiman and King David and all the prophets is all the same. They've all been in Al-Aqsa Mosque. Today, the entire plateau is referred to as Al-Aqsa. Nadab Shragai wrote the Al-Aqsa is in danger libel, the history of a lie. He says when Muslim leaders want to unite the masses, they claim it's in danger. The match that ignites the people and brings them to the streets and causes violence is this libel. Al-Aqsa is in danger and this is baseless. Archaeologist Dr. Gabriel Barkai says there have been excavations near the Temple Mount, but never under it. One of the cornerstones of Western civilization was never touched by the spade of the archaeologist. Barkai says it was Muslims, not Jews, who began digging in an attempt to rewrite history. Since the 90s, there were many uh, destructive diggings going on in the Temple Mount, which were not for archaeological purposes, but the contrary, for destroying archaeological data. According to Shragai, then Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin al-Husseini started the libel against Israel in the 1930s. He accused the Jews of wanting to collapse the mosques on the Temple Mount. That led to Muslim rioting and murder of the Jews, just the first of many incidents. Islamic expert Dr. Yitzhak Reiter says the tactic hasn't lost its potency. They really believe in what they think that Al-Aqsa is in danger as long as Israel is controlling the eastern part of East Jerusalem. In 1969, the Muslim world blamed Israel for the arson attack on the Al-Aqsa Mosque by a visiting Australian Christian. That lie continues today. More trouble in 1996. The worst Israeli-Palestinian violence in 30 years broke out when Israel opened an exit for visitors to the Western Wall tunnels half a mile from Al-Aqsa. And in 2004, Rain, snow, and a minor earthquake toppled the entrance ramp to the Temple Mount. That provoked an international Islamic uproar when Israel tried to rebuild it. We asked Muslims in Jerusalem what they think. It's in danger. To destroy him, to took the place, it's in danger. They are digging underneath it and digging and digging and they don't find anything. God will save it. <laughs> Experts say it's important the West takes notice now because millions of Muslims believe the lie is true. They say if it brought violence in the past, it will do so in the future. Up next, is the U.S. asleep at the switch while China is busy building its military might? What this could mean for the world when we come back. Now, for a limited time, you can get five of CBN's critically acclaimed documentaries. Experience the rebirth of the modern state of Israel. The historic bonds between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be broken. Relive the battle for Jerusalem in the Six-Day War. Jerusalem is yours forever. Discover how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. When people need us, we volunteer and we come and help. Explore the world of Israeli technological innovation. We're people of dreams. God gives us dreams. And that's really the roots, I think, of, of much of our innovation. And understand the biggest land dispute in history. Many Palestinian Arabs claim that the Jews stole Arab land. But is that the real story? This exclusive Israel DVD collection can be yours for a gift of $29.99 or more. Call now or go online to get your Israel DVD bundle, which includes streaming access. Download the CBN News app 24-7 News from a Christian perspective at home or on the road. One place for all of your news. Breaking news alerts. Set daily prayer goals and pray for news stories. Read the most important news and watch CBN News Channel Live. CBN News, because truth matters. Go to CBNNewsApp.com to get the app today. Now is the time for Christians to oppose the anti-Israel boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. In CBN's free guide, Stop the Boycott of Israel, you'll learn about this malicious economic warfare against the Jewish nation. And you'll find out how you can stand beside Israel, the birthplace of our Bible, faith, and Jewish Savior. Get your free copy today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash bds. 
A recent Pentagon report is shedding light on a military buildup in the country considered to be the greatest national security threat to the United States. China has long worked to outpace the U.S. economically, and now its sights are set on the military front. Experts warn if America doesn't act now, the communist regime could become the top power in the world. National security correspondent Caitlin Burke has that story. The Chinese Communist Party is conducting the largest military modernization effort in the country's history. A move the Pentagon believes is not only in preparation for taking Taiwan, but also for overtaking the United States as the world's leading superpower. I see the United States as, as the world's leading democratic uh, power, and China is the world's leading authoritarian power. So if we don't realize that we're in a competition, we're going to lose that competition, and our core uh, national security economic interests will be at stake. The newly released DOD report on China's military strength includes some significant findings. In 2021, Beijing tested 135 ballistic missiles, more than the rest of the world combined. Their nuclear stockpile sits at around 400 warheads, but is expected to grow to about 1,500 by 2035. The PRC is stealing technology from the United States and sending it directly to its military. They have strategic partnerships with Iran and Russia, and they're looking to build new military bases around the world. Beijing is sprinting to build the capability to carry out their words. They're matching, they're matching actions with words. That's, to me, the bottom line. Bradley Bowman, the senior director of the Center on Military and Political Power at Freedom for Defense of Democracies, says China is clearly preparing to take Taiwan, even if it means a direct military conflict with the U.S. He believes how we respond could determine whether or not China displaces America in the power competition. If you don't like what you're seeing in Xinjiang with what I would call crimes against humanity and some have called genocide, if you don't like what you've seen in Hong Kong with the extinguishment of freedom there, if you don't like what you see with the bullying in the South China Sea, and if you don't like the saber rattling the Taiwan Strait, if America stands down and becomes insular and stares at our belly button and thinks we can get away with ignoring the world, we're going to see a heck of a lot more of that globally. Some believe Beijing's military buildup is simply to match the economic power they've become. But Bowman argues without transparent strategic dialogue with the U.S., the Pentagon is right to sound the alarm. And when we don't have that transparency and we don't know exactly what's going on, it forces the Pentagon to assume the worst. And when both sides are assuming the worst about the other, it leads to dangerous miscalculation. Bowman says the U.S. has what it takes to deter Chinese aggression, but there needs to be more of a sense of urgency coming from Washington. He says that would involve immediate funding to ramp up our own military modernization efforts and to start acquiring the weapons needed to defend democracy worldwide. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Washington. Coming up, human rights activists raise alarms about religious persecution around the world. The Simon Wiesenthal Center presents alarming new findings. Names from the Old Testament are being unearthed all over the city of Jerusalem. This was amazing. Come as close as you can get to personalities that are known from the Bible. Astonishing discoveries made today. A jaw-dropping moment of Bible archaeology. This is much more than a thrill. This is actual history that took place here on the site where we sit right now. Confirm the kings and prophets of the Bible left real evidence of their lives. Right time, the right place, with the right people. And one of the most significant finds in recent history. Exactly as the Bible tells us happened, in the days of King Hezekiah. Written in stone, kings and prophets. We have the Bible and we have archaeologists. Here in our story, it's matching. The Old Testament is a reliable history book. Get your copy today for a gift of any dollar amount. Call now or go to cbn.com slash written in stone. Here, we're committed to a heritage of rigorous scholarship dating back over a thousand years. And to a faith tradition dating back a thousand more. This is how we create a culture of inquiry where no topic is off limits. And a culture of hope. Anything's possible! It's Christian leadership. And it's changing the world for the better. It's higher learning. It's greater knowing. It's what makes us whole. It's what makes us regent. 
Experience God on a new level. Empowering the believer is what this podcast is really all about. Discover insights into scriptures. Be encouraged by inspired teaching. Everyone listening. Everyone. You can be a chosen vessel. The Lesson with Gordon and Ashley. What did Jesus get? Everything that the Father has. Yes. Learn more about what God has for you. The Lesson on cbnfamily.com and YouTube. You may not be surprised to hear that religious persecution is on the rise around the world. <laughs> Rabbi Abraham Cooper from the Simon Wiesenthal Center has battled anti-Semitism for decades. Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl spoke with Rabbi Cooper about his expanded role working with a U.S. agency, taking on persecution of other religious minorities. Rabbi Cooper, thank you for joining us. You're, we know you from the Simon Wiesenthal Center, and now you're also, in addition to that, have taken on another task. Can you tell us what that is? Well, USERF is the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom. It's mandated by Congress. Uh, it's all voluntary. We're commissioned, actually, to be, if you will, an internal critic of American policies and push uh, you know, for more compliance and more changes among the 27 countries that we look at in the area of religious freedom. We're now up to, I think, 2,000 prisoners of conscience around the world. That oh, means wow. people who are paying a heavy price uh, for their for being faithful, mm -hmm. Christians and Muslims mm -hmm. and Hindus and others. We look at about 27 countries and unfortunately leading the pack among religious minorities suffering the most are Christians mm -hmm. around the world, starting with China and, uh, you know, the Coptics and mentioned uh, just now uh, Nicaragua. Don't have time to talk about Nigeria, but it's a long, long list. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I consider it to be uh, an honor uh, as, uh, you know, someone who's worked at, at the Wiesenthal Center for 45 years mm -hmm. to, to represent my commitment as an American and as a religious Jew. Uh, to the broader uh, goal of uh, religious freedom for all. Can you say what the worst thing is that you've seen? And also, if you've seen anything that has corrected itself and, you know, been challenged and corrected. So, uh, I mean, just to talk about some of the positive things, and it's not necessarily because of you, Surf. When you see that Saudi Arabia has made a U-turn in terms of not allowing Islam to be weaponized, to focus on the on Americans and, and hatred against Jews. Mm -hmm. There's been significant progress in the books, school books. The negative side, in the Vietnamese regime understands the rules of the game, and what they've done is basically created the false sense that there's religious freedom because they essentially co-opt all the leadership, and they dictate what has to take place. They're almost using the China model where if you want to be a Christian leader, a faith leader in China, you better sign on to the political agenda. If you don't, we'll, they'll knock your church down and probably put you away. And when you think about it, religious, the, the right to pray to God, to believe, mm -hmm. that's the litmus test for human dignity, mm -hmm. for human freedom, and probably for the health of any society when we're looking about who we should be backing in the world in terms mm -hmm. of foreign policy. If you have a regime that uh, weaponizes religion or throws people in jail or worse because they look a little bit different and they pray differently, those are not regimes that the United States should be uh, calling allies. Now that's saying a lot. It's a complicated world out there. Yeah. But at least we have the opportunity to put forth what was and is a central tenet of, of America, which mm -hmm. is freedom of religion. Up next, a stone altar from the time of Abraham and Melchizedek sheds light about ancient Jewish worship and what it means for our faith today. Hello, everyone. I am so happy we are together for one of my most favorite times of the year, Thanksgiving Day. Gizmo and friends have so much to be thankful for. I'm thankful for my family, my friends. For God and all that he has created. We have resources to be able to live. And the Holy Spirit. Those are wonderful things to thank God for. Always be thankful to God for the things and the people in your life. Join the CBN Animation Club and get the Great Thanksgiving Turkey Test. 
plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. This special holiday program features ways of showing thankfulness through games, activities. This is my first time going to be eating candy corn. And much more. President Abraham Lincoln declared a national day of Thanksgiving to be celebrated every November. The Great Thanksgiving Turkey Test, yours when you join the CBN Animation Club. The more we practice being thankful, the easier it is to be thankful for everything. Come home to the sounds of Southern Gospel from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern Gospel favorites like the Gaithers, the Crab Family, and bluegrass sounds like Mountain Faith. So make yourself at home with the all-new CBN Southern Gospel, now available at CBNRadio.com. Introducing a brand new way to start your morning. Get your daily quick start from CBN News. A quick read on the important news of the day delivered right to your inbox. Stay current on breaking news, politics, and entertainment. Discover how God is moving around the world and here at home. Plus, get exclusive stories and daily scripture encouragement just for you. Stay informed. Go to quickstart.news and subscribe today. In Jerusalem, an Israeli archaeologist discovered the remains of an altar dating back to the book of Genesis. He believes it dates from around the time Abraham met the high priest Melchizedek. Take a look. Archaeologist Eli Shukron has spent much of his life looking for Bible history in the city of David. He showed us an area he believes dates back 4,000 years and includes everything necessary for animal sacrifice and worship. In this room, what we have, we have the platform. Mm -hmm. On that platform, it was an altar, and the channel taking all the blood and all the other going out mm -hmm. from the altar, and you collect it here in this place. In this area, he gave CBN News an exclusive look at what he feels is one of his most important discoveries, kept under lock and key. If you came here, we can see that this is very, very important finding because this is the heart of the place. This is the pillar. So Krun says this stone pillar is just like the one described in Genesis 28, when Jacob had a dream of a ladder reaching up to heaven in Bethel. After the dream, Jacob said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. Shukron believes Melchizedek set this stone up in Jerusalem, just like Jacob did in Bethel. What I'm saying, worshiping God the same way like Jacob. Oh, Jacob worshiping God the same way like Melchizedek. We are in a very, very important place. Go back to Melchizedek. Go back to Abraham time. Understand which way these people worshiping God in the beginning. Sukran says it contrasts with ancient worship in other places. If you go in that time to other places in the world, in Egypt or in Mesopotamia, you can see the temples with golden mm -hmm. idols and I don't know, pillars and uh, here it's simple. Mm. The stone, animals, sacrifice. The stone is the house of God, not gold and diamond. Everything is simple. Yeah, yeah. This is what God wants us to be simple. It's fantastic. For what? What reason? To connect mm. it with God. Sukran says the combination of the altar for sacrifice, the blood channel, the olive press for anointing oil, place to tie up the sacrificial animals, where they divided the sacrifice, lead him to believe this was the place where Melchizedek met Abraham. Genesis 14 describes the meeting. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. He blessed Abram with bread and wine. And Abram gave him a tithe. Why Abram gave him a tithe? Because he was worshiping God. A tradition and way of life that continues some 4,000 years later. What are you doing today? The Jewish, the Christian, we're blessing the bread and wine. Different way, but blessing bread and wine. And we're anointed. 
what all that started here in the city of David in the temple of Melchizedek. This is the place. Sukran says this area was closed to make room for another place of worship. They filled it, they closed it. Why? Because no more worshiping area. Let's go focus to Mount Moriah, to the temple that, that Solomon built on Mount Moriah. Sukran sees this area as predating the temples of Solomon and Herod on the Temple Mount by hundreds of years. Before we go, we want to honor a giant of the Christian faith who has gone to be with the Lord. Jack Hayford died at the age of 88 on Sunday, January 8th. For three decades, Hayford pastored the Church on the Way, a congregation of the Foursquare denomination in Van Nuys, California. It grew from 20 members to more than 12,000 by the time he passed on the mantle of senior pastor in 1999. Hayford's influence spread worldwide through his Bible teaching and the more than 50 books he authored. He also composed some 500 hymns and choruses, including the popular and much recorded Majesty. In his later years, he served as Chancellor of the King's University, a Pentecostal seminary he founded in 1997. Hayford was a leading Christian Zionist and shared his deep love for Israel and the Jewish people. The church's ministry in this time is to become embracing in our hearts toward Israel. First and foremost, praying for the peace of Jerusalem, loved ones, is not simply saying, oh God, bring peace to Jerusalem, or praying, Lord, come again so there can be peace in Jerusalem. It's praying for the health of the situation there. It's praying for the betterment of people there. It's praying for the resolution of situations of confusion. He also taught frequently about Israel's role in world events as foretold in biblical prophecy. But in our present era, the gathering of the nations against Israel, the Bible says all nations will come against them. That scenario is so frighteningly credible right now, right now. And it's uh, clear that that precipitates a, an explosion globally that uh, at the very least will have a dramatic intervention of God to defend uh, Israel. A post on the King's University Facebook page said Pastor Jack Hayford died peacefully in his sleep. Plans for his memorial will be announced soon. We at CBN have many fond memories of Jack and his ministry and saw firsthand how the Lord used him to encourage and bless the body of Christ. And as they say in Israel, may his memory be a blessing. And I personally had the opportunity to interview Pastor Hayford many times and I was impressed with his grace and his uh, character. Well, that's all for this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And you can also access CBN content through our CBN News and other CBN apps. And don't forget to sign up for our email blast so you can continue to receive all of our exciting CBN content. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.